Interesting. Either the talisman is broken, or our target is moving. You know, this is why I sail. I stand still, then we arrive somewhere new. All this walking is pretty shit. Simic, I'm inclined to agree with you. I'm a big fan of a good stroll, but we must be nearing the edge of the Empire at this stage. Thank goodness for the occasional trot, or what has taken days could have taken us weeks. Have any of you noticed that uh, guy in the cloak? He has been following us. I have. I caught him a while back. And when he's not back there, he's watching us up close. I've seen movement in the corner of my eye for days now. A rock, a tree, a shadow. He is good, whoever he is. But nobody is invisible. I assume he's waiting for the right opportunity to say hello. Anyway, if I've got my bearings right, Minnie's home telling isn't that far. An all-you-can-drink keg and Minnie's stew is to die for. If we keep up this pace, we should make it before nightfall. Okay. Yeah. No, no, you go for it. You start. No, no, you start. Okay. Uh, Okay. Um, Welcome to E4 2019. The last laugh of the season. Last laugh of the season. And this is the Friday just before time in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you kick it off. Well, we've got so much much going on. Like, my aspirations this weekend are to become the uh, ambassador to Charm. Yeah. Um, It's a big part of my kind of like lead into this. And I don't think it'd be like you've put a lot of effort, more effort than you probably put into anything else in anything LARP. Anything else in LARP, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I've sent out a bunch of letters, different senators and yeah. different people trying to get the thing. And uh, yeah, the lovely, lovely chap, uh, Matt, yeah, who plays a character called Skywise Fowl. Yeah. He's an Imperial to Orc, isn't he? He said, to, I bumped into him and I said hello and I was nice talking to him and then he was like, oh, come and get this letter. Right. I wrote you a letter. So I went I went along, grabbed it from him and yeah. it was this perfect, like, in-character binded letter with a seal on it. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. with my name written in, in, in whatever. How, what's that script called where it's all fancy looking? Oh, like a telecise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, awesome. So much excitement. Got back, took it back to the camp, read it. It was yeah. a really, really nice letter. Like, really got me in the mood for everything else that's going to happen. Yeah. And he also gave me a pendant. Yeah, and that was inside the envelope. Inside the envelope. It, yeah, yeah. And you are you um, opening this and sort of tipping it out. And it's like, a, actually like a really cool bit of kit. Right? As well as everything else. It's just an awesome thing. That uh, it, it made me like so excited for the weekend. Yeah. It was, and it, oh, I should say, I had some words on it. You know what? Yeah. It just had some words written yeah. on it. That's, I'll yeah. leave it at that. If you want to know what they are, come and find me or we can talk. But um, yeah, there was uh, a, an inscription on it and it was like a rally call, basically. To kind yeah. Of like, yeah. Yeah. It was good. It was really, and as an object, it was really cool. I think, as you say, it really pumped you up for the event. And you were already super excited. Yeah. And you were giddy as a schoolboy going into yeah, this. Yeah, I was like, I was like... Um, I was like game on with the political thing basically I was like my dipping my toe in last time had made me kind of like now's the time I'm going to really you know, put my all into this and see what happens um, yeah so we, we just do time in yeah I mean uh, I suppose yeah we I mean really just through most of Friday before time in we'd just been sort of basically chilling out doing all the stuff that we do at camp and that yeah. was it was really just a really good day and all the benefits of having had set up the camp on the Thursday and to walk into Friday it's all done swapped, all the stress is off <clears throat> we swapped out some potions and a few other things didn't we and some money just because it was like well yeah. we're going to do this anyway yeah. let's just do this now and not just slow ourselves down you know it's incredible once you're at an event like what you start to realise how short it really is and how much you have to get done that it's they are getting shorter and shorter for me yeah like it's, the first event took forever and it was a long really tiring process this event yeah. flew by for me. It was it and was so fast. You have to uh, uh, basically pick things that you can't do. You know, you have to. You, this is the game that I'm going to pursue, and I'm going to dedicate this much time to it. Right, and it, it, it changes things up. It adds. Oh, I did do one thing before time in. By the way, yeah, I went to Dave Kimball White. Um, he did a new, well, a kind of magic. It wasn't just new oh, players, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but a magic introduction thing where he mm. kind of. He did some talking and there were two other people there who were like players and mm. they went through a few bits of us. It was a really nice little, another, again, yeah. 
hyping me up for the event, basically yeah. kind of talking about what magic is and the different applications of it, basically. Yeah, and you've really kind of, I think, like, your, your character being a magician, which is something very different that you've challenged yourself with playing. I think you've kind of really thrown yourself into it, and stuff like that well, helps, I haven't right? really done much on the magic front. Obviously, I went back to the Synod last time and had a bit of a look there, which not really for me at the moment, but... I mean, the was... Conclave, sorry. Conclave, conclave sorry, yeah. Conclave. Um, so that was kind of interesting to kind of see and kind yeah. of get to into a different world and a kind of different mindset you know yeah 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 um, but you've, you've done rituals now and things and you you're a bit more versed in that yeah oh i went there trying it with the intention to do a few bits and pieces yeah. as well yeah so that's something it was cool um but yeah that was really interesting so yeah should we do uh should yeah we do time, time in, in. so it times in and yeah i mean basically we have our groups standing oh we'd also heard that there was going to be shenanigans at the main gate yes so yeah. due to there's a whole bunch of stuff basically going on this weekend to do with what happened in Brokiliand, which yeah. is the there was a big fight between the Valorn and us, but also the Drew showed up to be allies. Craziness. It was a big ensued. old mess. The the writing on it was like this giant like World War One battle of attrition where it was like also um people had sent military units there which we had two of in our group and that was uh, <clears throat> Bungle who plays uh, Gaius and Dave, good Dave, he plays uh, fire. Mm -hmm. And basically, if you'd had a military unit there, you could choose to have a traumatic wound. Yeah. And you I, actually, I don't think it was a choice. I think no, you, you got, got one in your pack. One. Yeah, yeah, you got one, one in your pack. It's part of your pack, which is a traumatic wound is something that is truly, can be yeah. truly ghastly. And it's like we had to sort of fizz rep those up. So like, you know, we made some stuff for Dave because he had like an infected wound or something. Mm -hmm. And then we made... Um, some stuff for Bungle because he'd had like his leg had been savaged or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. It was like there was like very pussy infected yeah. wounds, you know. Um, oh, also a big part of the storyline is the Briars. Yes, the Briars are a lineage who are like tree-ish, and basically they've been affected by the Vlorn, and therefore they have started to the people that were there fighting yeah. started to grow flowers. Yeah, and have, and have visions. Dreams. Yeah. yeah, and it's like. It was all sort of building up this idea that certain, you know, if that's how you wanted to take it, you could choose to decide that your character is suddenly suspicious of Briars or... There's a lot of civil rights issues yeah. with yeah. this and some people are playing, like, there are there are OC and IC factors involved in having a conversation about Briars. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. there's, it's, it's, a, it's a wider thing. But, however, I'm like... I think it's a great part of the game. Yeah, personally. yeah. I mean, it's it, yeah, it's the same with like having orcs and like how people feel towards them, and that was so much awesome game last event to have, you know, that whole kind of anti fork, really thinly veiled anti orc kind of. Yeah, some of the game that yeah, opened up this weekend was really interesting. Yeah, and to see where people's allegiances lie and how that affects different characters. Yeah, um, really interesting. It's right? an opportunity for disagreement in the VAR, which is also a thing where we're quite a united nation on these sort of various fronts. There's basically, we all want to kill the Valorn and everybody yeah. really tugs in that direction. <laughs> so having this is kind of, it, it, it adds an extra bit of spice in the nation and with other nations. It was amazing. How, yeah. It was a fascinating. Game. On the, uh, there was a, on the tree... Just oh. at the front of where you come... So the Navarre camp in the woods. Mm. And there's a little gate and you walk through it. And on the tree, as you mm. walk in there, there's a sign. Yeah. There's a, it's a little like a piece of paper hammered to the wall. Or to yeah. the tree. Yeah. And it, what, what did it say on it? Um, see them... No, oh, see them, know them, burn them, or scorch them, or something. It yeah, was craziness. Something like that. It was a catchy three-line slogan. Yeah, about and basically, it was, it was basically kill Briars. Propaganda yeah. on... On yeah, look out for the briars. Yeah. Be a good marcher. Is yeah. is a marcher specific thing as well. Yeah, it's also interesting because it's Navarre don't just camp in the woods as well. There's also people who camp just outside the woods. Yeah, and um, just to have, as so a, essentially as a backdrop. Yeah, to on the, the entrance whole, to the woods, it sets the whole mood yeah. of like that. There's there's obviously shenanigans happening. I mean, we people mentioned are, people aren't happy. We right? mentioned some of the political stuff in the pre larp, but basically things are a little bit tasty in the empire at the moment yeah we're pushed on all sides yeah the empress is not on the throne in fact she's gone missing and presumed dead so therefore yeah. she's no longer no. the empress officially she's no longer the empress yes yeah. right so it's like yeah even if she came back tomorrow there's no getting yeah. back the throne yeah. right so it's everything's the doors are all open right it's, it, 
and drivers start your engines basically yeah, right and it's, it's so uh, interesting from from nothing to now yeah all allegiances have suddenly become liquefied and everything is this crazy game you know? and at this moment the empire is very strongly pressed and mm. there's lots of threats facing it from all kinds of different directions it was an awesome backdrop bonkers yeah pd really really did very well i think helping set up a lot of these things obviously the other thing is a lot of these things are player built actions you know these all ramifications mm-hmm. of player actions yeah culminating towards what is essentially a very very spicy moment in and time and the empire inevitably has to pay the price somewhere right yeah or, uh, and that, or a bunch of places right? or will they choose to, do they have do they have the uh the courage to do that that's the interesting that's the sort of challenge right do we slowly decline because we're unwilling to seed anything i'm glad that yeah. i do not currently oh, have the uh that that going on in my life right now yeah it was fantastic it'll keep me awake um but yeah on time end basically we have our own ashborn striding yeah. uh, standing sorry and which is basically a, a meeting around the fire yeah and then we have uh, the national standing that we go to oh yeah i remember our yeah okay go on so the groups standing we had um it was quite interesting because I kind of got to walk out in my soft kit for the first time. It's fancy. And I'd kind of slightly fancied it up a little bit. Bear in mind, Talis looks pretty bare bones. Um, but he has like a little sash now that I basically bought like a pretty expensive curtain. <laughs> and think... essentially uh, sort of used the material for it. But I think there's a, there's definitely a uh, like Talis is starting to believe his own hype. He's been hanging out. A little with, bit. He's been hanging around with high rollers. He's got a lot of coin in his pocket. Well, not yet, not at this point. But well, you, I, but you I, yeah. still have. Yeah. I mean, like you're still the the main breadwinner. You're the hero yeah. for Kelly Ann's. It, it's cool, not like to like OC like a, a lot of these things. I find because I'm not the kind of person who kind of is like super confident or whatever. But like I see, it sort of drives it a little bit to be a bit more confident in myself. Like Talis is a bit more confident maybe than I, than I am, mm-hmm. um, and he's. He's still humble to a point, but I think it's kind of a lot of the things that have happened to him and the fact that he's been through a lot really kind of added an interesting edge to my character. And it was interesting that your characters all kind of called me out on it a little bit. There's there's a there's unrest. Yeah. Hell, I even called a who supports Talis in his oh. current role. That's how much criticism was coming Talis's way at the start. Okay, so Going into the event as well, the other whole backdrop I had for a lot of this mm-hmm. was a lot of people have died. Yeah. Essentially on my watch. Yeah. And uh, Talas was in a state where he wasn't sure if he wanted to have that role anymore. Right. Um, so I needed to have a conversation with Bungle's character, Keys, and basically talk about where I was at. A little bit was, of that was done pre-LARP, uh, but a lot of it was done inside the LARP itself, basically, you know, talking about like, I don't know if someone else dies, if I can carry on. Yeah. And I felt it. It was kind of, uh... so like this whole event was basically, I was really worried that Bungle's character was going to die. That that Gaius was going to die. I started the weekend thinking that you were going to die. Yeah. I thought I might die. I mean, there could be a, let me put it this way. Sometimes you can fight and death is a choice in that. Yeah. 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 Right, you can be a little braver than you usually are yeah. and roll the dice on that shit, right? And I, you had that look in your eyes, I feel, like when we were, when it, we were starting. I was willing, there were certain situations, I mean, obviously in battle anything can happen, but there's certain situations going into this as well uh, where I thought if the right things happened, and I know you can't plan a lot of these things, you don't know where you are till you're in that moment, but in my mind I was feeling if the right things happened or the wrong things happened... I would let Talis die. Yeah. And that was kind of an interesting thing to go into the event with. It was bonkers. It's, it was bonkers. Re- it's, it's really interesting to see you get to this point as well because we've just, uh, I think Ifan, the death of Ifan really hit Talis really hard. Yeah. And I think ha- when he died was yeah. really important because there was unfinished business on the table. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it, yeah, it's really fun like seeing that from your point of view. We, we even like, okay, Oh yeah, you should talk about you bringing up the Navarches. Yeah, so basically, I mentioned that I was going to have like a a party slash get together for the Navarches. You didn't mention party. Yes, no, actually, I didn't. Mention you didn't party. mention party. The way he put it was there was you know, they needed a place to meet, and uh, <laughs> would it be all right? Oh, no, he didn't say would it be all right. He said, uh, and I've arranged that they're going to be here, 
at this time to go and do this. Yeah. And we were all just like, all right, let's have a chat. Yeah. Because where do uh, Talis Ashbourne's loyalties actually lie? And there's like, also, uh, at the backdrop to this as well, is I've had a lot of involvement in Burizen. Uh, a lot, yeah, got a lot, a lot of, of Burizen. Sort like, of loyalty over there. Right. Um, I mean, I've, I've essentially sworn my services over there. Yeah. So... A lot of inappropriate stuff going on. Yeah, so yeah, it was kind of cool. And that was really... And that this sort of stuff, I guess, evolves over time, over play, over different characters having opportunities to interact with each other. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of stuff that we've all earned together, this right? This is two years worth of... Well, we missed one event, but this yeah. is two years worth of story building up, right? Yeah, and I, think, and I think the cool thing about this particular aspect of, I guess, our stories... It's not a huge bit, by the way. We're making this sound way bigger than it is. Mm. But for us, it's something that we all earn collectively together that we only we could express... Yeah, with did, each other and I think that was, was cool what was fun was I didn't know how it would go yeah like there was lots of ways it could have gone and I, and I genuinely didn't know what was going to happen well, I mean I had to basically argue my point right I had to like let you all know where I kind of stood yeah on it and that was cool and then as I say you called I the vote on it we it called cool. a vote on it and it was like but there is a, a, a it's still you still feel it it wasn't I was really there, tempted there was like after you've had an argument with someone and you're like I'm really really sorry and they're like yeah it's fine yeah. That's how it was. Yeah. It wasn't a glowing hooray. It was a grudging, just like. This right. was the thing. At that meeting, before you guys all came at me, I was going to announce that, that basically uh, I thought we should, other people should go for the position. Oh, you were? I was. That was my So plan. it was us being aggressive with you that made and you. Then, and then the fact you all voted for me after I'd oh. spoken stopped me doing that. Because originally you all thought I was going to offer, I wanted to have a second. Yeah. No, I was going to basically offer it the position up. Wow, Jesus <laughs> So, <Christ. laughs> But because Fuck. you all came at me, that's what made me actually go for the Gee, idea of... You know like, what? You try and... I try and act tricksy, and then you just... You're a, yeah. No, it was, it was... But that was cool, right? Jesus. Because I went in with a plan of what I wanted to do. That's honestly what I was going to do. I was going to be like... I, I can't see any more of you die... You know, I'm out of this role. I'm out. Yeah, we definitely had a thing this weekend that was no no Ashbourne's dying this weekend. Yeah. Well, that I was very strong on that because it, that was almost like a prerequisite lost, to me staying. Like, what do you guys do on Friday night at LARP? Because we have funerals. We have funerals. That's what we do yeah. every Friday night. And that was the other big thing at standing, of course. The main thrust of the standing, I guess, beyond expressing, you know, you had political ambitions and I was going to be doing things and we were going to be... Well, actually, there's a lot on, basically. Mm-hmm. But I guess one of the main things is Linda's death. Lloyd, who plays Linda, his character died last uh, event. Yeah, and much like if and the event before, we we have we we're going to have a standing for him. I, I felt like Lloyd was really starting to. I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning this. Yeah, but it's like he was really starting to find his place in the game. Yeah, and then Linda just got snatched in that battle. Like it was. Uh, I think it was the way it happened as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Especially, it's it's a rough way to go, and I really feel like it. It kind of just Lloyd was so close to just really latching onto himself yeah. and I think he did this weekend in yeah. unexpected way yeah and I think like he really went for it this weekend and I like and, and as I say I think actually losing his previous character was probably a big impetus on that I think because it makes you realise how fragile it dude, is dude losing your character I should say going into this weekend I was so scared of dying yes like, you, I think I, you more than anyone like, was scared of like dying. straight up like I was terrified about the prospect of yeah. it because it was like I'd, uh, you you've know. invested a lot right it was in everything yeah it was like I've sp- I spent too much time doing this this is you know it, it's it, from the person who was Ifan yeah who was the word reckless was used multiple yeah. times at yeah, funeral, yeah, yeah. and it was like great to be like I'm just not gonna give a fuck I'm gonna I'm gonna push that impossible option yeah and then come I'm gonna take that risk yeah of course I'm gonna take the risk every single time I need to go from that to this character, and I'm like, it's it shell shocked me as a yeah. human being. I can't die. I can't die. I don't want to take those risks anymore. Yeah. It's, I've, 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 um, what's it? Dave Herbert, who was a, like a racing driver, right? He was like this young upcoming fucking star. He was a really really good driver. He had one really really bad crash, right? And after that, he just lost his edge, right? Never became yeah, what, he, yeah, what, yeah. He, what he could have been. And it's like that's how that's how I feel right now. I've I've, I've lost my edge when it comes to fighting. I tell you what, what else was really cool was um, the camping next to us is the longest path, mm-hmm. and they've got a guy who camps with them called uh, Travid, and he kind of he was running for a political position as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and, or, this weekend, and he basically because you were talking about what your ambitions were and what he was going to be doing and he was like if we both get elected yeah. we should both go out on the battle and he was like because he's yeah. actually non-com at the moment yeah like and he had no plans but I like to battle that but he, he like like the idea that you if you both got the positions you both you win it, it on the field. and then you roll the dice yeah i loved it i thought it was what a cool thing and 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 yeah, you both had that sort of twinkle in your eye that that's something that might happen. Yeah. It was cool. Um, it was cool. Yeah. Um, right, so where we... So, so we had our, our standing, and yeah. then we had, what, the, the national, national standing? standing yeah. Mm-hmm. So really, as I say, the main things that were discussed were the, these political ramifications of what were going to be happening. Yeah. Um, also, people being informed about briars and yeah. all sorts. Like, Getting an idea. There were, there people had... Um, Representate like flowers coming yeah. out of them, so you knew who they were, and you knew bad things were possibly surrounding them. You know exactly. Really cool. It was very, very interesting. Like, yeah, I think the setup, as I say, and all of that stuff, and and standing really helped hammer home what threats are out there. Yeah, and really kind of let everybody know that you know decisions are going to have to be made this event. Did you? You have sorry, we have notes next to us. Yes, and you have written Fawns Council. Yeah. Now is that the Fawns Council of the nation or the entwined parts? No. So we'll get to that later. One of the things that we were going to be doing as well, which we also spoke about in our own uh, striding standing, mm. was that uh, we were going to be having the first real proper to get together of, if you like, the political leaders of the entwined parts. We're going to have like a council yeah. later that night. Um, with the idea of basically putting into action a bunch of things, which are actually pretty big. This One is a, was this picking. Is, I, I love this, by the way. Yeah, there's like the, the the a lot of the people, not all of the people that we know, but there were people that we're friends with who yeah. we get on well with that we can all, we're comfortable RPing with and mm-hmm. having a good time with. And now we're all coming together, yeah. keeping our own identities, coming together, and we're going to make this little thing, yeah. like the first meeting it's of not the little council. Anymore. No, it's not little anymore. That's the size but, of it. But it's, having it's a huge. council meeting, yeah. voting, under, like making rules on who coming we are, to decisions. what people are expected to do, like it's really exciting, isn't it? I mean, in this one, we were doing big ones, like we were picking who's going to be the military leader for the entwined paths on the field. That's Fuck a huge yeah. decision. It's a huge decision. And... Like we basically, we wanted to put forward a uh, good day fire his, the, the, um, him basically for the role. Yeah, and I think this was a big what's, thing. What's for interesting us. about fire is good Dave. Yeah, um, he was blocked by Ifan. Yeah, whenever well, it's two characters. I mean, yeah. Can, anyway, but Once now died, now yeah. he's taken the role as the military leader of the Ashborn. He's He's stretching his legs now. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like where he is right now, like how he's approaching the game, sky's the limit for him right now, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, like, there's lots of interesting <clears throat> stuff in the future that could potentially happen as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we wanted to put him forward and we'd spoke, I, I'd spoken of a couple of other people to get an idea of sort of what other candidates might come up and what kind of support might be out there and things. Yeah. So it was, a little, it was kind of fun to do that little bit of... Uh, in, okay, let me put it this way. There's like... There's the wider game, yeah, which is the PD game, which is yeah. setting up the world that we live in, right? Like the yeah. Senate and, and and the Synod and yeah. all that, all these different groups and all stuff. Yeah, yeah. The Runners is a good example of game within the game. Yeah, you just start doing it. Yeah, okay, you just do it. And then if enough people do it with you and it actually has an, a yeah. world effect, it becomes something very real. Yeah. Um, so, like, there's nothing that PD have initiated in any way that says that the entwined paths had, had to get together and decide who their military leader was yeah. going to be. That was all the player-led stuff from multiple different groups coming together, having meetings, discussing that point. Very interesting. It's it's amazing. Yeah. And, like, really, like, um, it's, it's just, it's cool to watch and be a part of. And a lot of those people that are part of that came into the game when we did yes and or, I think or near as damn it right one of the really cool things about the entwined pass is as well i feel that we're all people who get on well it's, mm-hmm. there's a cool vibe to the group i think we're all we're all pulling in sort of the same direction well at my, the moment, my husband yeah sinwig he's part of the uh the group as well yeah. so uh you it, know it's nice we're, we're all married together you know yeah and it's and it, actually collectively on the battlefield as well we represent a big chunk of people yeah, we'll get to that because yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll but get very to that. interesting. But um, on top of all this, as well, we should say that um, Good Dave's brothers, 
sorry, brother and uh, his friends were all coming as well. So that was four more people. Oh yeah, of course. I should we should definitely mention this. So that yeah. was really awesome. So Michael, who hasn't been since when was it E one? He came E one. Yeah. God, he spent the whole season out, and now yeah. he's come back with all his homies. Yeah. And hey, we should just talk about this. Mm-hmm. They came in. Yeah. With such enthusiasm and yeah. like. We're not noobs anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because come, came they, a bunch of times. it yeah. was like watching these guys. Were, they were like, they were like kids in a candy store. They were so excited about the idea they His, could pay, yeah, in character coin, yeah, and get booze. Yeah, like they were amazed by this as yeah. a prospect. And I remember, like, I felt the same way. Yeah, we're going to go to different bars in different nations and all that. All of that. Yeah, look at us now, Ian. And this is the crazy thing, right? My game right now is awesome. Yeah. I love it. I'm, but there's a little I, bit of me that will always be jealous of the new player. Fuck yeah. Shit yeah. Oh my God, there I am. Like, I've got my politics game to go along to. Yeah. I would love to be that excited about walking into a bar. I still get pretty excited walking into a new bar. And, and just, but now it's 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 nowhere near. Throwing yourself at a bunch of skirmishes. The, all of that. The unknown. Yeah. Yeah. The un, the great unknown, the excitement of it all. Fuck, I'm so jealous of those bastards. Yeah. They, they were, they had a great time. They looked like an amazing time. Also, whenever like new people coming along, you're like, oh, are these people going to enjoy it? Right? Yeah. We saw a few new players who were around, players that we knew. You know yeah. what I mean? New players who were being involved in the game. Some of them were nervous about it. Some were less nervous about it. But man, all of them had a fucking great time. Yeah, right? They had an amazing time. Jesus. They really went for it. I think it. That, it really helps, I think, to go with friends. I think that's a massive benefit. And I think that's yeah. something we really benefited from. But it really makes you just, as we've said so many times, solo LARPers, the ultimate respect, the fact the, that people go out and do it. The more friends you have, yeah. the better. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. it's just, you... The, because their game involves your game and you can meet new yeah. people and it's just like... Even our neighbours. Yeah. Like... We're getting on very well with our neighbours because yeah, yeah. he's interested in politics, and yeah. we're having a really good conversation about it. Also, supplying us with like you know also anyway yeah fantastic. Yeah. You end up building these like layers of the onion of where you're like yeah. I have context and such and such, or you're like I have a problem. Yeah, I have this going on, and that's something I'm going to do. Well, I can help you with yeah, that, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is really interesting when you start realising that everyone's pretty much uh, an asset in their own way. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was really. Yeah, I mean, we'll get we'll get to all this, but yeah, it was it it, it was okay. super interesting finding our place. Um, so I talk about jam and hustling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mentioned earlier going for the principles of jam ambassadorship. Yeah, jam are like the slave keeping, like racist hierarchical. Like it's only magicians that are in the like, leadership, the, the leadership and, stuff, yeah. and there are slaves and orcs are definitely slaves that are kind of like this racist, like apartheid, a terrible regime, and they're on the other side of the Liberty Pact. And I, I've, I've kind of fallen a little bit in love with these guys now because I'm like they're the, they're just the assholes. Now one can see that just, just. What four generations ago, our fellow citizens were slaves and not questioned at all. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but now look at us, look how progressive we are, and I feel the jam have the possibility to change. Yeah. This is my character. It's like you can always see the best in people, right? Yeah, and I think that's something you, you do well. Like your character's outlook on a lot of things is trying to basically improve situations and not focus, not get overwhelmingly sort of drawn on, down on the negatives on a macro level. And this isn't always the case. Obviously, I'm a human being. I'm yeah. trying my best. But um, if you see someone who doesn't believe in themselves, their potential, you try and encourage that yeah. behavior. Yeah. And there's a few bits that happened this week, and I actually got to do that. Which yeah, and I really think that nice. really fits uh, your character. I think that's a massive part of who he is and mm-hmm. how he presents himself and his attitude. Yeah. Um, so basically, I went into this with a strategy. Yeah. And I'm just going to, because, okay, there's a, there's a, before we start any talk, any of this political stuff, really, um, I'm going to tell a story. Yeah. The story is going to be missing sections. Yeah. I will change some sections or just flat out not mention it. Okay. Yeah. Because there's other players going to think about, I don't know whether we'll, how close we'll get to that. Whatever this wall is in our heads that we're saying that there's a line. Yeah. Um, we may cross it. 
I yeah. apologise if we do, but we're going to try our best to try and kind of give the impression of what it is to go for one of these roles. Yeah, and, I think there are so involved. many concerns going into talking about an element of game like this, <clears throat> Yeah, where you're concerned about how much icy stuff you could potentially spoil. Yep. Uh, you, you, you're worried Other about people's any potential. Game, yeah, exactly. All this stuff. Um, so, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it flows, and you guys will just have to join yeah, us exactly. on that Exactly, let's, let's all kind yeah. of talk about it together and then see where the, the line is, right? I think there'll be... Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, let, we'll let's see. It. We'll find um, it. We go into this with the best intentions, is basically what I'm talking about. Yeah. Know? Um, and, and all of this is also a lot of it is our opinion and how we feel. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, cool. Right. Let's let's not build up yeah. too much. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. No. I think it's like okay. So so this is and I think it's important to go through like this is my strategy. Yeah. Okay. So the arm are these slave pe- keeping people. They're on the other side of this thing. But we've also traded the, with them for like two hundred years. Yeah. They're going to go potentially to war with an, uh, another large nation called the Commonwealth, who are have a lot of similar ideological things how the modern empire re- works you know yeah yeah they're, they're kind part of, our, of the, one part of the liberty allies, pact right? right which is yeah. so they're against slavery they're kind of like nice and then i say everyone um john the opposite of this and they're going to fight over this tiny little island basically no so it's, it's a bit the, of land, it's, the, it? it's a bit of land that joins the two nations right, okay so it's a buffer state effectively sure, sure. um there were like some, uh, the leader died or something and then there was like a coup right and then that like, got squashed and yeah it was like the jam sponsored the coup potentially and sure. it's all like it's cold war about to kick off into a hot war so my this okay this is my strategy having yeah. read all this stuff i sent my fleet off despite yeah. them being an, under an embargo to yarn so i could role play that i actually been there this season so i could talk about it are there any like i took a hit for but are there any RP. repercussions of doing that? Like no, I just get... get I just get a trade tariff. So I got this that spell done on me. I went away yeah. and then I did trading there, but it was under the embargo, so I got like way less than I would have got. It otherwise. Seems like you got a lot. I well. still got a lot, but then I got the thing, and it's a really profitable port. Yes, right. Yeah, it's a really profitable port, but it's under the embargo. Uh, so, basically, Are there any IC repercussions for that for you going, even though there's an embargo? No, just uh, I'm, a, I'm a free citizen in the Empire. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Like, uh, no, no, I was just wondering if you got challenged on it by anybody. or no. I suppose nobody knew, right? No, they're still... Yeah, that's yeah, tasty. Friends, at this stage, they're still friends to us. I hadn't really thought about that. <clears throat> so, I came up with a backstory about what I've been doing, and I sent out loads of letters. Yeah. And my Friday, I was like, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to try and shake hands with as many senators as I can, yeah. and try and pitch my idea at them. My idea is, right, yeah. the vote has already happened, so I feel a bit more comfortable about this is about what it. Your and idea it's my is, shit, right? Yeah. So my strategy was we will, they have secret magic potentially that could help us defeat our enemies. Yeah. I would, I would, they've got a church there and they're teaching the way, so yeah. that's a good thing. The way is like the, the religion of the our empire, religion, basically. the empire's yeah. religion. It's yeah. an extremely integral part of the empire, yeah. is, is religious belief. So that's a plus. So my idea was potentially having imperial citizens having the freedom yeah to go and offer their mercenary services to the yarm yeah in order to maybe learn some magic while they're over there yeah. okay and this was to build to a relationship where i would like at the age of 45 every slave to be released back to the empire yeah um and we will use our ships to go and pick them up yeah and when they get here they will be. They are free citizens of the empire, yeah. so they'll be able to go and do whatever they want. But if they want free room, board, and supplies. They can walk the trods for the Navarre and yeah. strength the thing. I feel that is a fucking strong position to go into a. Uh... What I liked about it was you, you you kind of approached it with this idea of after a certain age, obviously slaves lose value to the people they're with, and it's unrealistic to maybe expect them to completely drop slavery. Yeah. So you had to. You were working at that idea of kind of chipping away. Oh, and if they want to stay, then then the jam have to pay them. Yeah, that was a condition. So say if there's a really valuable slave sure. who's who's like excellent at doing accounting for you or whatever. Yeah, and you want to be like, okay, he stays on, but I'm paying him. Yeah. So it gives hope. Hmm. Ch- change everything. This yeah. Is, you know, now, of course, all of this might fail. Yeah, but this was your idea of what you, your platform yes. you're going in, and and also you, it's, it's important to say these weren't like goals you were expo- expecting to get on day one. These were like your agendas. This for... was my entire year's yeah. strategy, yeah. basically. Um, also, another important thing we should say about the Yarm is the fact that we were due to have their ambassadors vi- visit 
six at this event. I think yeah. it was six o'clock on the five or six o'clock on the Saturday. They were Saturday, due yeah. to have this group come and come yeah. and chat to them. Come and chat to whoever the ambassador was. Yeah, who hadn't been elected at this point. Um, I've been doing like a fair bit of political poking. I got mm-hmm. like two letters back. So pretty excited about what else was out there. Went out there and basically me and Bungle hit the streets. Yeah. Our entire night was spent going around different nations trying to track down senators. Yeah. I only spoke to one senator I had sent a letter to. Right. Every other senator I spoke to was a new senator. And there are a fuck ton of senators, by the way. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, hit yeah. Brass Coast, Eurozen. Uh, I spoke to a Varushkin lady who was a senator. Yeah. Um, what, was that about it? I mean, I tried to hit up High Guard, but I couldn't find anyone. But that was about it. You did a lot of walking around, It was a lo- but That, that seems like lot. a really short list, but that was a lot. I yeah. spoke to a lot of different senators. And I, like, it was interesting. I spoke to, like, the Brass Coast who are like notorious for taking bribes. One of them was literally like when I went to speak to him, he went to me, I can't talk about bribes right now because I'm being elected So I, in the morning, so I don't know whether I'm even going to be in office or not, so I can't knowingly accept a bribe. And I thought that was really cool where there was a lot of kind of, it's interesting, you have this idea that you can be bribed to a position, yeah, but in you're one sentence about your position. Yeah, right? you're so, yeah. like, I am an honourable person who is willing to be bribed, but I can't be bribed now because it's dishonourable because I might be right at my position. Fantastic. Amazing, right? The fact that people would game like that. It's, it's so yeah. good. <clears throat> oh, I should mention, um, there was a lady in uh, the, da- uh, the Brass Coast who had a son. Right. This was an adoptee. Right. Who was Navarre. Oh, interesting. And didn't know anyone in Navarre. So I'll just do this whole bit in one on yeah, one yeah. but the she was like could you maybe show him around a little bit so i was like sure later on he actually came by the camp found yeah. us okay. i was like all right sweet and it was sparrow doing his drumming workshop we just managed to catch the end of it oh right yeah, so yeah, i yeah. went up in true spirit of my character grabbed a little drum for the guy sat him down gave him the drum and then uh said like right you know i basically said like oh just listen to Sparrow who was doing the class and yeah. do your thing and I started telling him uh, I started going like listen like because it's re- there's a big circle and everyone's hitting their drum and yeah. we've missed most of the class so we don't know what's going on Yeah, I said to him like listen everyone gets scared it's how you deal with the fear that's important yeah. you know and then so it comes around and he just bam 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 and he hits the drums like really confidently but he yeah. was like you know a little bit nervous before he went yeah it was a cool fucking moment, dude. The guy's like, uh, I, yeah, it was it was cool. Yeah. He uh, he came by again later, like yeah. on, I think on the Saturday, and it was Saturday evening actually before yeah. we went out boozing. He bumped into me just as we were leaving to go and get drunk. Yeah. And I said to him like, listen, I'm really sorry, but like I'm heading out drinking. It's not really appropriate that you're hanging around with me while I'm drinking. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took him to a different camp, and it was just a, there was a lady there, and she was like. We were talking and I said, like, basically, oh, I'm a Navarre, but my knowledge of the Navarre and our ways isn't necessarily the best that I could be able to teach someone else as well. Whoever now else could speak to this young member of our nation, you know? And then, yeah, this lady came over and was, like, happy to talk to him. I left him in, just in great hands, you know? It's great. And there's so many people who will just, if you just approach them and talk to them, and which it often you make this sound very easy, of course, but to if you can get the confidence to do that, Everybody wants to have yeah. a game with you. I need to write a note because how this event ends is on, on that note yeah. a lot, right? Um, yeah, so basically went around hustling all the different... Um, uh, I say hustling, it makes yeah. it sound terrible. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, but, just kind of try and like make my face known to all the different people. Friday is a busy fucking day. Yes, there's and a lot on. Like, imagine it's the... the, the, the you're a senator. Yeah. You have... Potentially, you maybe have to give up regions you represent because yeah. you need to make decisions on how the war's going to be fought and resources. And so all this many stuff. things happening. And then in the gloom, a young man comes up. A young man, I don't think I qualify as a young man, but a man comes up to you and starts explaining to you why he would be <laughs> a wonderful candidate to run for the ambassador for Jean. Yeah. It's a hard fucking sell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. A stranger coming out at night and especially I didn't speak to anyone that was actually solicited apart from one guy. Yeah. Right. A senator, sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of support though. They yeah. Were very, I think people were, all seemed very positive from what I heard. They were like, they were really friendly about it and they were like, I can't guarantee you my vote, but I'm compelled by what your ambition. I think it's yeah. really good. And we had a bit, we had, it got RP out of like yeah. discussing what the different things I were. I think he, like obviously I wasn't involved in most of this but watching you throughout the day I think you really seemed to enjoy it yeah you know I think that was like 
um, it's it's interesting just how much it's, of our game used to be battles and how much now how much pleasure you can get out of doing the kind of game that you had now. It's I, it's, I, it's there's a lot of game here, and I still have like it's a lot to digest. Yeah, I mean you can't talk about all like, of it. Even now, so. like it's Thursday today, we got back from Sunday, so this is our, our distance. It's taking me days to digest what yeah. happened at this event. Yeah. You know. Um, <coughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, while I was walking around, I opened the gate to the synod. All oh, right. Awesome. How does the, that actually? The, whatever. The, oh, the, the sentinel is. gate. Yeah. Exactly. Sentinel, sentinel gate. gate. Um, I have to walk up to it, give it like thirty seconds of RP or something. Yeah. I did my usual chat, and like Bungle was like, "That was pretty cringe," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah that's fair. That was pretty cringe." But it was like, uh, "No, I just, you know, you got to give it a go, right?" Hey. So that was that to let people because, out on a skirmish. Then no, it's because you no, not the sentinel gate, not the actual main gate. Right, right, right. Into the a Hall of Worlds. Ah, okay. Right, 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 right. Yeah, way less dramatic yeah. than that. Jesus. I mean, that would be really exciting if I did that. No, it was just, like, just for me, basically. Yeah, still, that's pretty um, awesome. No, man. well, Dave Kimball White mentioned it, how it's good to do on the Friday because you get to, because it uses a personal manna. Right. So you, if you can't re-up it, then it's good to do it on the Friday before You get it back the Saturday. next day, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, yeah, so I did that. That's, um, it's interesting doing a little bit of magic to myself, but... Yeah, I'm going to get used to it. Yeah, I think it's going to take a while. And I think it's like... I think you just need to get whatever your shtick is down. Like, whatever your thing. And I think that takes a bit of time. It's performance art, right? So you're going to have to work on how you <clears throat> want to... You know, how does Gellert do that? There's right? st- the, Yeah, there's stuff that I learned this weekend that might feed into each other. But mm. Yeah, yeah, that's later. cool. So while all this stuff was going on, because uh, this actually is quite a broad length of time that we're talking about here, by the way, you doing all fr- of that. Friday time in is what, six o'clock? Four yeah. O'clock? Six o'clock. Yeah. Six o'clock. It's so late. Yeah. It's so late. Yeah. You got shit to do, right? Yeah. Like there's a... But like that whole process you just described there, it took you several hours, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was several many, hours. Many, many, many hours. I was exhausted. Me and Bung went around and visited. Yeah. Oh, dude, I should say thank you to all the different wonderful characters that I met. Yeah. It's a, it's a really good way of getting around there and basically just trying to put yourself into different people's game and seeing what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Like, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Like, all the stuff that we're telling you, this tiny, like, yeah. slit or through a doorway into something else, right? That's all we're showing you here. There's, I, there's a whole world of people doing stuff out there. It, it's always crazy just, and you can't really get this unless you go, just to understand that when you're walking down a road and you're hearing people talk you'll hear little conversations and snippets of conversations and and, and so many of these are game and in so many subtle and and large and small and and trivial and jovial watching and chaotic people, kind of ways watching people plotting yeah. or talking about something and it's like so obviously oh my god you guys are plotting some bad shit right yeah. now like uh but it's it, everyone's like doing their own thing people it's walking around slowly maybe having a couple of drinks tongues loosen well we were like we were just imagine two navar yeah. wandering around trying to like it, you know it was like like it was like the country kids heading into the city for yeah. the first time that's yeah. how i felt doing it because they were like talking to all these different senators and like mm. putting my fingers and also the danger of having a actual position yeah right so i'm going into it being like no, here's my idea of what I want to do. Well, here's the thing. So, uh, <laughs> which is arguable all by the way, way through the event. Yeah. Also, jovially in <laughs> jest, but you can imagine this happening across the empire. People were talking to us about, oh, why don't we just go and kill your competition, kind of thing. Yeah, and those comp- and obviously <laughs> most of the time this is all said obviously in in jest. Uh, but it was just no. the idea that these conversations are I happening had, up throughout I, the empire. I had a few. Yeah, you had some hard offers, right? I like, ha ha ha. No, but for reals though, like, <laughs> I'll kill someone. It was definitely I'll, like, there's I'll, a couple of people. I'll, I'll kill someone for you. Yeah. <laughs> it happened twice. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm pretty, yeah. Right? But what I'm saying is that conversation is happening in other nations about maybe, potentially you. Maybe it isn't. Like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe the, the League, maybe there might be a few assassins, maybe, yeah. would you say? Yeah. It was it was really cool. I, <clears> but the, the other, as I'm trying to say, this whole process of yours took several hours. And while yeah. you were doing that, uh, I had the Navarches meeting yeah. at our camp. Sorry, the Navarches party? Well, yes. So, that, like, I wanted to get a few... At, at the standing? Yeah. Yeah, the main national standing. Bear in yeah. mind, it had been described to us as a meeting. That's right. how the words that were used. 
oh, I just want to have a like a small meeting with the the Varchers or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and we were like, all right, yeah, fine. Comes to the national standing, and it was it um, Kaylee. Kaylee stands up and goes, yeah. "Oh, there's going to be like a meeting party at the Navarre camp, at the, the Navar, camp, at yeah. the airport camp." And we're like, "What the fuck? Did she just say party?" <laughs> and I was like, "I'll tell you about it later." Yeah. <laughs> fuck and later. What the? F- yeah. So we were, yeah. So I got basically. Uh, little nibbles out and stuff. It wasn't a lot, actually. You got fucking. You got nibbles. It was. Um, it wasn't a lot. He got but... all these bowls out, and all of us were like, "Why are all these bowls out?" And it wasn't. It wasn't for us. Yeah. It was like when you guys leave, I'm gonna really bring out the snacks. Uh, yeah, I had some quite nice snacks and sort of stuff, but it was cool. It was. You like... had those peanut butter little. What yeah, were they? Kind of like. Um... Yeah, I didn't see those offered around before the Navarches no. came. We got the Navarches like hand me downs, <laughs> their scraps off the table. It, yeah, it was good fun. And, and basically, what I really wanted to do though was because the, the Navarches military unit has basically become quite a good hub for new players to enter into <clears> as well. And also the fact that I just wanted to get people to visually meet. And I think that was the first step get people to meet each other, get some kind of visual understanding of who each other are. Yeah. And just. Then we can start but thinking about what like we want to do. Giving people, if you want to talk about being yeah. an archer, well, it's like any club, right? It's like you just show up and have a bit of a chin wag about. Yeah, yeah, it had that kind archer. of feel. It was basically you can make a bit of game for people where if you have any questions, come and have a chat with me. And I had a couple of people throughout the event who, because of that, obviously were hope. You know, it seemed a bit more confident to maybe come and talk to me or. It opened up a bunch of doors that way. And mm-hmm. it's just nice. Just to know people makes a huge difference. So that was really cool. It was a pretty long meeting, actually. Um, you know, it, but it was just really nice just moving through stuff. I'd made everybody these kind of um, uh, leather um, sort of things with basically the Navarches logo on it, which mm-hmm. I handed out as well. So that was kind of cool to give away to everybody and just give everybody something they can sort of take away from the meeting i mean it was it was a fancy do for uh the yeah, for, for, for murder us. alley it was the it was the fancy for, for the ashbourne it's probably on. the fancy as fancy as we get right yeah it's the fanciest party on murder alley ever yeah so uh the other thing that happened after all this and i think you might have been there you were there for this moment was this chap with this leather mask came walking by mm-hmm. and uh like a pad so and he's dressed like a marcher, yeah, but this leather mask covering his face, yeah, and he kind of moved with a, like a, a slow, yeah, and it was like, but he was, I it was the there was menace, yeah, menace on the air. You know what what I mean? like... There were there were four of us hanging around, and I was just like, mm. well, this could fucking turn south, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, he seemed a a suspicious character, yeah. And what I like about it is that everything he he's done here and it is basically made like i see you hate him oc you love him because he just brings the, so much game and so much balls the man's a genius yeah and the thing is a lot of people hold on we need to tell him yeah, why he's yeah. so impressive before we all just start like uh singing his praises yeah so he basically walks context. up to the camp and he's based because we as the ashbourne are basically positioned at the, in, in a pretty interesting place in the logistics of the camp we get to see a lot of people who basically we've got a quick traffic pass, yeah, right uh, yes yeah, so we get to see a fair bit of traffic so he was sitting there and he's basically asking have you seen many briars today yeah could you give me no, a count of like, how many like, briars are walking he was like like a like a, a thug psychopath yeah nazi but he kind of came up to you like he was doing a census right uh, just want to uh, he was polite yeah but like down a business and just just went straight into asking like Question of the book out and was yeah. like, "Do you have any briars walking up and down here?" You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, oh yeah, we sometimes get briars, and we yeah. had a bit of a chat. And then he was like, "And uh, how many would you say we've seen walk past here? Yeah. Do you know any?" No, no, any... no. They started yeah. off with how many, yeah. and then we're like, "That seems a bit of an odd question." And then he started to go, "You're not friends with any briars, are you?" Not... Yeah. <laughs> how many briars? And he's like, and he started. He wanted our names. Yeah, what striding that we we're with, and so I take this like census data on like what was going on. It was like, it was like the early stages of genocide, didn't yeah. it, wasn't it? It was this, it wasn't it, the malice around it yeah. was like it, it, and he played it really well, really like, super well. shifty character, super shifty, av- avoided direct questioning, yeah. went yeah. straight back to the questionnaire. Like it was, yeah, it, it left an impression, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, and also. 
uh, the backdrop to this has to be the previous event. The same character had done some similar stuff with the orcs. Yeah. Uh, so it, it kind of built up this whole kind of thing of like, is he against? No, is he just basically trying to sow discontent in various elements of the empire to fracture it and basically build infighting with different groups? It was it was like having the fucking KKK or some shit like in yeah. your midst because it's like it's it's a secret you don't know. How deep does it is go? Is it just one guy or is yeah. it much more? And it gives us, a, like, imp- because of the lack of, it's a, you know, you're learning it as you go. You have no idea what's actually out there. It's like you let yeah. your imagination go with it. And it's, it's really impressive. It was great. And the, the other thing is, which I think he did very well, was if you have a secret or a group or a cult, I think the, 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 has, so the, and you might be encouraged to basically make it very secret and mm. to basically hide it. And to be honest with you, things like that, you kind of need to overplay them a little bit because everyone's always... There's so much stuff going on at LARPs that you kind of need cues mm. to work off. So like a secret that which is never discovered is kind of pointless. Or That's a good point. You yeah. know, like if you go, That's how I try and think of things. Like the idea of, say for example, if, if Talisto was to go out and kill someone, right? Do, do you just do it in the most efficient way possible, you know, paralyze venom, shank, 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 down they go, fire them, shoot them with an arrow I or whatever. That, or do you okay. leave a little bit of game with no, them? No, in that circumstance, I would say, depends on the relationship. It depends on the relationship, but I think it's very interesting to, for the idea to go and do something and set yourself up for a potential risk of being caught or something like that. The idea that you set yourself up with this idea that you, and, and, and he very much did this, right? He made it very, very obvious that what he was asking was shifty as all hell, mm. right? Left no doubts in our minds that he was ba- what he was saying. And if he was doing this for real, he would probably be way more... That bit was brazen. Yeah. That's what I liked about it. That, but that's what I mean. But I think it worked really, really but well. It, was also it made a very like, strong impact on the game. Yeah, it was like uh, also like maybe seeing if there was any support for the idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey... I want to talk to you about briars, and then the person's like, ah, "Well, I hate briars." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and the guy's yeah, yeah. like, "Well, let me. I've got a club yeah. for you." Well, and that's the thing. We don't know if that even happened. Like, yeah. They could have done, and there's other people he went and talked to. But the, but straight after this, we went and basically uh, I, an orc was walking past, um, who I kind of recognised, but I, I wasn't sure if they recognised me, and I couldn't remember their name. So anyway, I just basically said, you know, this guy's been coming down here. I know you guys have had troubles with him in the past. Mm-hmm. This is something to be aware of. Could you tell everybody in the orc camp that I think there's someone basically trying to make multiple efforts to divide the empire along different lines of racism, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was kind of cool just to have that little bit of game that I you had could just have. a few chats like that with the orcs, actually. Yeah. They're, uh, they're a grizzled bunch when it comes to hate, basically. Did you go and see uh, Skywise during your walkings around? Yeah, so I kept on trying to go and find Skywise, right? But yeah. he is Skywise Fowl. He's an incredibly busy guy. Yeah, he's a like, big job, right? He's the well, Imperial he's the, Consul. Yeah, who's in charge of basically all of the ambassadors and foreign policy, basically. Yeah, I think, isn't the idea that if there isn't, for whatever reason, an ambassador to talk to somebody, he takes on that role kind of thing? I don't know about that. Yeah, okay. I don't know about that. But um, basically, I did eventually get to see him. Yeah. And he was just talking to a young lady who was also running for the position. Interesting. So competition. You end up like, oh, hello. You know, like was this your first sight of the competition. Yes. Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, oh, I should say there was no incumbent. Yes. And right. It was, it was so, a big part of probably why you went. Right. Well, there's it's it's a good sign. Yeah. Incumbents in real life politics, as there are in LARP politics, tend to stay in if they're doing a slight, even slightly competent job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was like, at first I was like, oh. And then Fowl was like, I'm going to ask you some questions uh, that you might get asked. And we went through them. I was pretty well versed. Yeah. And like, I think it was her first event or she was a new player. Sure. And I thought she really bought, I think it was a Dawn player. Yeah. I liked her fucking moxie, basically. Yeah. There was like, uh, the, it wasn't perfect. But it was a really fucking good base for something a lot stronger than that. Yeah, like that yeah. was a, for a first crack. It was really good. It's. I mean, you found this last time, right? It's a lot to take on the political game. It's also being asked. Like, I think it's like this is going to sound like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but putting an emotional spin on it rather than just yeah. like giving your knowledge on yeah. a subject, right? Yeah. Um, 
like trying to give a little bit of RP to it and, and I, I don't know. yeah yeah but it was really good and it was also like really fun to be like hey really good luck tomorrow do you know what mm. I mean like it's like uh, I ran for my first thing last event and like I'm still learning but it's going to be really fun like uh, good luck to you I hope it goes really well that's awesome it? Um, yeah it was nice to do that though yeah. because it was like you know just to kind of take any sort of I don't know like, I think there's, there, there is like when you're all going for something right There's a, and there's a lot of work that spent goes their into t- exactly people yeah. spent hours to go and research and come yeah. out there with their best and it's like you stand against them from doing that and so I think it's nice to, in yeah. a way in other, the, other than yourselves going for the position, none of, nobody else can really understand exactly what it is to be going through that process. You're yeah, the only and people also just can to, understand. to see your competition, yeah. Yeah. right? It's, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, it's, I think it's healthy, though. I think it's a good thing. Um, yeah, so so oh, there was another guy there who turned out to be the third person that was running for Interesting. it. He didn't take part in the quiz, though. All right. He didn't take part in the quiz. Um, yeah, but that was the kind of... yeah. That was where the, the competition was. Okay. And but you got the to next, speak. Until the next day. Oh, I got to speak to him briefly. Um, there was all sorts of shenanigans, basically. But basically there was like, yeah, you should maybe... And, and someone else, another important political figure, also told me that I should come to the the Senate at three o'clock the next day. Right. Right? There's a bit of stuff. We'll talk about that on Saturday because yeah. a little bit of context for that. This is probably really boring for people listening to all this political wrangling, but yeah, um, yeah we'll get through it. It's, yeah. it's yeah, there's a lot of story in this, you know. Yeah, right. So we went back and did the oh, talk about Farron. Yeah. So another thing that had happened pre LARP, uh, Sol, who plays Farron, had sent me a letter, mm-hmm. and basically, uh, him and me in the previous event, our characters have both gone drinking, a bit of gambling. Had a really good time. Yeah. And he's a friend of the Ashbourne. He's a friend right? of the Ashbourne, a long time friend of the Ashbourne. But he sent me this letter, which was basically essentially a drunken letter talking about it's how... a drunk text. How he'd basically become addicted to gambling, lost everything. What? And... That's amazing. It was so good. And he was... Ba- but he was, like, still riding, like, the, the semi-high of the drunken phase of his life. Right. And I was like, oh, my... I'm going to have to, like... You're gonna have to save him from himself, kind of thing. You know, right. I'm gonna have to do an intervention. Um, where my character was, I was like, I'm not sure Talis is capable of doing an intervention right now because I also had a, a story going on in Urizen with Lanius and his sword, sort of <laughs> essentially slave driving him crazy. Yeah. So I was like, oh my god, I can't do like two. There's, you can't double crazy in your life. Yeah, I can't you? do two. I can't save two people. Yeah. Um. So anyway, but he, ultimately, what happened was. Uh, it turns out Farron decided he would go and get imbued with, I think it was night magic or winter magic. It's one of those, and, right? Uh, it basically made him have like uh, insatiable hunger. He and it made him. He started like being interested in like tasting blood and then like eating eating things. The first time I saw him, yeah, he was like came up to me and went like, "Have you got any food?" Yeah, I'm like really really hungry. I could eat. I could eat. And bear in mind, like, Farron has been someone that we, we've known him since one of our yeah, way events, early on, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, um, he's, that isn't him. Yes. Right? So he is definitely behaving different from how yeah. Farron, the person that we know, acts. I think yeah. I said to him something like, what, you, what have you been doing? Yeah. Like, uh, and he went, oh, I think he said something about the winter magic or whatever. And he says, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm really hungry. I want, I want nothing to do with that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I got too much shit on. Well, right the other now. thing is, like, your character doesn't know him that well, right? Like, no. And also, this is an interesting thing for your character had come into the event and you purposely played it that you'd only just got off your boat. Yes. And you were just finding everything out. Mm-hmm. Even though you actually knew a lot more than that. Yeah, I wanted to play it, it like uh, the Briar storyline. Yeah. I was playing it like I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. I'd heard bits and pieces. But all the stuff I kind of try and base my character on because I've got a fleet and I'm sailing away yeah. and all that stuff. Is based on other sailors' chat in yes. bars, yeah, 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 or yeah. say if you, I don't know, come alongside another ship, say yeah, your, yeah. your husband's ship. And the kind ship. of news you would get in a foreign port, for example, yeah. what would that news be like, especially at this sort of time with this kind of technology? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that oh, it, it was oh, really also, cool. oh, also, I forgot to mention, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. Farron, no, awesome. In the uh, Imperial uh, offices, yeah. there was a picture of the Empress with a black. Um, uh, like veil over half her face in the wow. thing. 
it was like death of a fucking statesperson, you know? It was, it, it was again, a really interesting back, backdrop to the whole event. Mm. I didn't talk about it much, actually. There was a lot of there was a lot more chat in the political world. Yeah, for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons, uh, but also just walking around, um, it was just interesting to occasionally pe- hear people talk about it. And there was kind of like a, a somberness, maybe isn't quite the right word, but it's close to that kind of feel about it. Some often. people, some people were devastated. The league was very affected, yeah. obviously, because the, she was from the league. I think wasn't yes, she? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, like, there are some OC stuff that we know about that, but I would like to talk to her, the person, before we yes. even spoke yeah, about... Yeah. It's it's a hugely interesting situation. Yeah. But basically, it leads to a lot more um, game off the back of it, basically, her not being there, uh, unfortunately. Um, right. Eurozen? Yeah, I, I popped over to Eurozen for a bit, basically, just to sort of uh, see what's going on, pretty much, and get an idea of where the nation was. Um, I had a, a, an inkling about some of the decisions that were ultimately maybe going to happen the idea of essentially uh trading territories for uh peace with the grendel yeah now i'd only like i think at the stage i went people were just sort of murmuring about it i i, I don't know where the decision was i didn't actually get to talk to any of the people i normally speak to in Arizona as well which was quite interesting mm-hmm. or, or not really so i just basically walked around and spoke to a couple of other people and thank you very much all, all of those people for engaging again with me and just I was kind of just asking how the nation felt because I mean, at this point I was more concerned about how does how do things sit now that Druge kind of came to help us against the Valorn. But actually, uh, it seemed like everybody was pretty fucking cool with it in, in a sense of. But everyone's been sending a lot of forces and a lot of forces have yeah, signed think, up with the Valorn. I think a lot of people are actually I, at this stage just let's kill the Valorn. Yeah, I think a lot of people were kind of like they got that it wasn't our fault that the Druge came and helped. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that was so that was kind of good. But anyway, so it just led to this other bit of game, and it was just really nice to sort of walk around and have the opportunity to speak to all of them. So, but after all this, we'd arranged basically to have uh, oh. Lindis telling. Oh, uh, sorry, yeah, we've got the order wrong here. Let's do Lindis telling because that was yeah. earlier on in the night. Yes. Um, saying goodbye to another fallen comrade. Yes, yeah, so we'd arranged this at nine o'clock, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have got the order slightly out. But anyway, uh, it was it was it was different from doing uh, if fans. Yeah. But in a way, like it was just a really nice process to go through. It was still like a, it was it was fun, kind of like hearing all the different people talking. Yeah. Kind of for, for a very different character. Yeah. And like it was honestly, it was a, like I said before. Yeah. It was a shame that Lindy died at that point yeah. because I feel like it was just there was on the cusp of really joining in some really cool shit. You all know the what stuff I mean? he was doing with wisdom and and all the yeah. pamphlet stuff, which obviously I could do as part of my story. Yeah, that all of that was just building to something, and it was a shame that he died when he did. Yeah, um, but I mean that's how Empire is, and I think that, as as we said before, I think that's what was really driven uh, yeah, it Lloyd sucks. on. It was that's yeah. what that was my feeling coming off from the uh, funeral was like, yeah, oh, we, man, like it. Was, I think we were all was... sad to see that character not. You know, not be there, Do and, and we actually stage, really right? like uh, Lloyd's new character is actually really cool as well. But it was still, it was, it was there was that in the kind of air, yeah, a little bit. Right. So while you were off at Eurozen, yeah, doing your Eurozeny thing, yeah, Eurozeny party time, I go to Songs and Stories. Yes, actually, can, bef- can I get into something just before this? Oh, go on. Because it was the Entwined Paths meeting as well. Oh, yeah, just okay. before this, yeah. Um, so. There was a couple of things on the agenda. There's a couple of there's a few things I wanted to put into the agenda as well. Mm. But it was just primarily it was just really cool getting all the different leaders together to meet round the entwined past fire. Character made, yeah, and talk. Try to run, yeah, talk about what we wanted to do. Um, so the big one was basically um, putting people forward for the military leadership. Then I wanted to put forward the idea that we also support people for political. And military aspirations yeah you know if you're pushing for some kind of thing that maybe will help you with that and this actually ended up coinciding with the idea that we wanted to make a war chest and basically fund that and sort of put basically put resources in it that people can use mm-hmm. and we and it was really cool talking that through and exactly what form that would take because originally it was going to be like a tithe like a set tithe that we taken from every group and i think like different people weren't comfortable with that i wasn't particularly comfortable with that but, like having something that was sworn to but i just was like that's 
everybody put it in, but we'll take notes on what the different groups put in. So if one group isn't contributing or just taking advantage of it, we can call them out on it. So then we elect someone this is to be... The, yeah. yeah, this is the easiest part in this relationship. Yeah, yeah. Forging Things all this might out. change yeah. when this all kicks into practical. Exactly. You know? So it was really cool. So we got to elect people to different positions. I got made um, head alchemist, which was like really awesome. Let's talk about have. winning. That's like us winning the best UK audio only <laughs> LARP Navar podcast. <laughs> you that is that is the um, same as winning that prize yeah okay it was hey <laughs> how many al- alchemists are there was only- how was that competition how hey. was that competition hey though? don't shut on my achievements i wrote a book <laughs> on it i wrote a book on it what you got yeah that's right shut the fuck up so but anyway it's very true it's very true <laughs> it's very true where does shit on my my achievements you son of a bitch Sorry, no, but it no, is, I don't it is very no i don't no it is cool and it also awesome. uh, honestly i straight up think it is a good position because yeah. you do actually do that job you help yeah. out new players you help out people yeah. in our own um banner you know yeah um but something else i wanted to do was i wanted to uh get Caddock, who's played by john I wanted to get his character, who's put this whole meeting together, basically. I want to get his character recognised as some kind of thing, like a speaker or the person who draws everybody into the meeting. Mm. So we kind of ended up call, giving the, the title of Voice, Voice of the Entwined Past. I think that's perfect. I think that's um, a really good role. Yeah. So, yeah, and he, he just, he fits it really well. We had, so it, the whole situation was a really nice conversation. He's like a wizard who has, like, a good air about him. Well, he's actually an alchemist uh, oh, really? as well. Yeah, he's an alchemist. Um, I don't think he does. He doesn't do any combat, right? No, he does. Yeah, he goes out and fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm thinking of John. I think you might be thinking. Oh, of, not I am. Richard, I'm thinking, yeah. No, I am thinking of Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So no, yeah. Apologies. Yeah, uh, that shows how much I'm involved in uh, the Entwines Paths politics right now. Yeah. I'm not heavily involved. So, but no, it was it, it was it was great. But of course then came the big one like who do we have as the leader of the military unit uh, there were like basically there were two runners right there was our man and a different guy right? yeah so there was um fire and kale both running for it and kale's yeah. from, a, from a different group kale is it also by the way extremely competent extremely competent so it's like coming to this we're like obviously i see oc yeah we want our guy to be the leader of this i think that'll be yeah. like great fun to have that much like you know i'm really stretching have that game it. right whereas the other guy is completely competent right yeah. like is just as much of an argument i think it came down to the vote like like at the evening right so basically what happened was we were going to have a fuck? vote sorry we were going to have a vote on who got it yeah and you were in the midst of discussion no 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 we were going to vote on this and then uh, Richard proposed the idea of what if we alternated the roles so they each get to do, and we do that for a year, so each of them get to go, and then we make the decision based on merit. I think afterwards. that's a really good idea. It was, well. And we yeah. were ready to vote on that and tell them what our decision was yeah. all this time. And bear in mind, this conversation's been going on a while. We call them back to the fire because we also got them both to come up to the fire and deliver like a bit about why they want it and what they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, but when they come back to the fire, they're like, no, we've made a decision. So they decided between themselves that basically they'll do it where fire gets leadership whenever we're fighting kind of normal situations against sort of uh, regular foes. But whenever monsters are involved, then Kale will basically take control. So they came up with this decision themselves. They delivered it and what they wanted to do with it to us. And we were like, we're all happy with that. It was just really cool to have that as like, you know, we're much more happy for you guys to have something that you're comfortable with. I think the nice thing about Entwined Paths is it's a larger, like, political structure. Yeah. However, it's made up of people that genuinely get on with each other yeah. quite well. There's enough bonds between the different people involved to try and get through it and make something. There's, well, there's a manifest destiny thing about this. Yeah, there is. And I think, like, we, we're starting to realise that there's something we can do with this. Yeah. Uh, now, what will happen if there's ever conflict with inside the group or anything like that? I, I, I don't know. I dread to think what will happen. Well, but that's all well, game. I mean, would who would be known as someone that would <laughs> be appear to be extremely loyal, but behind the scenes maybe yanking yeah. a little chain here, but a little pulley there? There's maybe always agendas undermining other people's uh, intentions. There's always you know agendas. I mean? There's always agendas. God, I'm glad that was, <laughs> was, I'm glad our group has no one like that in it. Um, but no, that was really awesome to do. But um, yeah, after all of that, um, just some people went out drinking, and then later on, it was of course the songs and story time. Which yeah, you went off to Euro Zen, yeah. and that's when I was at songs and stories. Yeah, 
Our friend Sparrow, who is a major force within the uh, songs and stories, such a huge personality. Sometimes he'll he'll lead it. He does drumming. He's a really nice guy. Like he he's got a lot of charisma charisma about him, and he kind of yeah he carries himself. Well. Anyway, we like this guy a lot. Yeah, he yeah. likes us a lot. He's fantastic. We um he he ended up asking me, oh, do you mind if I do the story of Ifan at the songs and stories? Right, his death. Yeah, and I went. Like, Are you fucking joking? Of yeah. course. Yeah, and um, he said to me, "What sort of thing do you want to do?" And obviously, we'd done the podcast, and I said to him, "Like, here's the the version on the podcast." And I basically said to him, "Like, you can do. Like, I, I can't. I'm not, I could probably tell it better than that. I don't think it was the best telling of it, but it's the way yeah. it is." And I was like, "But you know, I could write it out for you, but it would be too academic. Like, just read it. And yeah, listen to it and see what you think." And he comes back to me with a full like story of it <laughs> there's pages right and I read it and I'm like this is fucking bonkers do yeah. you know what I mean like this is cra- this is this is crazy at this stage right yeah 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 I read through it and I'm just like there's a couple of things that I was like yeah, yeah. and I was like but do you know what like this is pretty much bang on exactly what happened yeah but from like, someone else telling the story yeah yeah like a little bit of artistic license in it no but there wasn't enough of it in my opinion at the time but I was more like just like not not to be in a good way, but more of his narrative. Yeah, I was like, just do you, just do your telling of it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I didn't I didn't say to him do any edits. Um, and he was like, all right, you know. And it was kind of I knew he was kind of nervous about doing it. Yeah. Um, I think and, it's something to stand up and do a story rather than a song as well. A story is hard. Right? It's quiet. Yeah. And it's a lot. Yeah, and especially like so, this story. I mean, I I wasn't hit. So yeah. standing there, yeah. he stands up and he goes, "I want to do a story." And there's that like. Oh, in my stomach of like oh this is going to be it and I was like really worried yeah that it was a guy who likes me a lot and we got on really well but it would be this. I was, I was worried about Sparrow yeah I was worried about him like putting all this putting himself out there and doing the story and about me and the story of my character yeah and it not being good yeah and like, I worried about him a lot oh. but he starts going yeah and he starts telling me my story of my IC death. Yeah. And it was, I went through so many emotions while watching this. It was yeah. like, I was like watching, I was really nervous. And then there was a couple of jokes. And then the way he delivered it was like, some parts were like a battle report. Some parts were like more emotional, but he kind of was a tennis and he hold, told the whole fucking thing, all right. the stuff from like how I got cut off. I'm so I jealous down, I wasn't there. I did all of that. He, Broke the ICOC wall a couple of times, which I, I don't know whether people liked or didn't like. Like, obviously, I was yeah. like, so transfixed. It's, that's, yeah. Anyway, I'm babbling now because it was it was it was a big emotional thing for me. I was fine, right up until right at the end. Okay, where he describes, he does the story about how I said, "Oh, you'll find me a grave man tomorrow," and then I can't remember what he said. I don't want to. It doesn't matter what the words were, but. He starts. He starts this patter of like, uh, and he's gone now, and he's a uh, that sausage, and he's he does it. He does it. So I'm getting welled up and talking about it now. Look yeah. at me. Look at me. Yeah. And um, oh, I fucking welled up. Yeah. Like real world, my eyes filled up with fucking fluid. Yeah. Like that's never happened before. Yeah. Like, look at me now. I'm literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm lot, on the cusp right? of it. Right. It's a lot. Um, that's weird yeah I think that's what we call bleed yeah and I there are certain elements of this but that's that's the strongest that's ever come on yeah and like people seem to really enjoy the story and like all that stuff and there was like cheering oh yeah when he said I want to tell you a story about Ifan Ashbourne who here knows Ifan Ashbourne no one said a word apart from <laughs> the four people in the corner listening to Ray! you know like us listening to it but um so no one knew uh, and the guy sitting in front of us actually but yeah, um, really emotional, really emotional. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it was a it was a fantastic thing. Oh, I'm so yeah. Like, I wish I'd been there. That's one. That's probably one of my biggest regrets of the whole event. It was like I wasn't there for that. Yeah, it was obviously really self indulgent for me. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know as I that. as I talked to you about last event, like <clears> I think <throat> there's that side of you that feels that. But for us, I think it's important to notice like. 
your character is important to our story, and that by by that, your character being important to our story, that that we kind of have a certain ownership almost of that I, part of your I character. I can't remember, but I think we talked about how how impressed we were by the idea of like people at songs and stories being sung about or yes. having a story about them, yeah. and and us being like that was like an incredible yeah. like high aspiration. Now it's like it's a fucking reality, dude. Yeah, like we're, we're doing it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's really like we're at that stage in this game, and it's it's yeah. fucking amazing. <laughs> no, it is amazing. Right? It's 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 um. Look at me, I'm I'm fucking. Uh, it's I'm, I'm lost for words with the like that sort of emotional impact it had, and yeah. I did not see it honestly. Most of the story, I was almost like aware of the fact that we were telling a story about my character mm. Mm. and then by the end of the thing it was telling a story about me yeah right that's the difference right and i think that's what the bleed idea is yeah. right at first the story started and it was some fun and it was like people were laughing at some of the things that happened which was really good but by the end it was it was it's really a lot personal. Right? it is a lot and <clears throat> i think that the other <clears throat> thing is i think there was a lot of you and Ethan as well. I mean, I think I feel like there's actually a fair bit of you in your current character too, but in a different direction. Yeah, it's weird. Um, like we can talk about this a little bit, but it's it's the and and this comes up later. Yeah, I it's sometimes very hard to tell the difference between me. Yeah, and my character. Yeah, and then sometimes there. are bits of my character that come into my, my my actual character comes into my IC character and it doesn't fit yeah and that's a weird feeling because you're like this emotion doesn't belong in this character and yeah. that's also something that maybe if they are negative emotions yeah well what does that say about me OC yeah that I feel these negative emotions and that's what's interrupting my RP yeah right yeah. because you're invested so there's a whole bunch of stuff to do with this that's it's new this is what I mean, right? Yeah. We I we didn't go for a fight a fight on the Friday night. Yeah. And, and like a lot of what we talk about in the podcast, many, many minutes of what we talk about is the fighting. Yeah. Now, we've talked for a long time now about other stuff. Yeah. But man, it's a whole different world. Like I, it's 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 interesting, right? The battles were really big this event and awesome and stuff, but I would say that the biggest stuff that happened this event happened outside the battlefield. Agreed. And it, that's a strange shift. The new players that came along, yeah, um, it's instant RP. Yeah, right. You go on the thing. They they lost on the Friday, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And then they but they battle throughout the weekend. Yeah, and like the battles are, and especially skirmishes are immediate RP. A great way to key you into what it is. Yeah, and now we've been there a little while. We need we're onto the we're onto the strongest stuff now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like uh, a battle just. A little skirmish, it gets me off, but yeah. it's like, oh, there's nothing like, <laughs> there's nothing like Sparrow telling my story at Songs and Stories yeah. to really get me peaking in an evening. You but know? the interesting thing is that you do have to, and in a sense, you you naturally do earn a lot of these things to a certain extent, yeah. and it, and you can earn them at different rates, uh, and different things can make them happen. Um, and I think that's like, there's a lot of stuff that sometimes you need to. It, it, I think. This event, I thought back about all of it, like all the way back to when we first started and, and, and to here and reflect on it a lot more and thought about all the things it's given me a chance to do and experience. Yeah. It's, it's a lot, right? This is what I'm talking about, right? If you listen to this episode, how emotional are we talking about yeah. this stuff at the moment? Because yeah. it's the last event. Yeah. Like it's... it's uh... Before we even started, anyway, but yeah, before we even start, we talked about what it, it's like to yeah. now be facing the long dark. Yeah. And we'll get right. into that at the very end. Let's keep but, going. Yeah, let's let's keep, keep going. this train on track. Um, so... One of the reasons I missed this was because I had my poker game. Mm -hmm. um, this was supposed to happen at 12. Um, I had some, done something just before this, by the way, but I can't talk about it. All right. But that's, that's, that refers to something else that I mentioned briefly in the pre-LARP. But I, I, can't, I can't talk about it. All right, it. Trixie, keep going. All right, so uh, anyway, I head off to the poker game. And it was supposed to start at 12, but it didn't really start till 1-ish. Uh, but I suddenly find myself... Uh, sitting at a poker table with pretty much all the sea well all the sea wolves who want to sit at the table an extremely wealthy ex political figure from high guard and me right <laughs> and i am one obviously... of these things is not like the others yeah i i straight up said to them like so a bunch of mercenaries yeah from the league and two other people 
walk into a gambling den <laughs> to play a game of poker. To, get, to play a game of poker. <laughs> How many people don't don't make it out of that situation? <laughs> yeah, and we're not talking um, small money either, right? So this was for, for me. It's a fair bit, I think, for these people. It's by the us, way, it's it was a lot. pennies. Like this is an issue with you hanging around with high rollers. So you should stop hanging around with high rollers. <laughs> It starts to affect you. Now, this is an interesting thing as well, right? So, basically, I get the opportunity to play in this game. And it's basically a two-throne buy-in, which is quite a lot for, for where we are. It's a ludicrous amount of money for the where we are The table right price now. was four crowns, right? That Basically, the croupier and the barkeep, which is I thought was very, very fair, considering all the effort they have to go to. It's a long-ass game to run. It's mm-hmm. a lot of your game to lose out on. So I thought that was that was very reasonable, and I actually I would have paid them more to be honest. Because shut um, the fuck up. Anyway, anyway yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> Jesus. But um, to get the option to do that, see, I was for, sort of for like I see. I'm not sure Talis would play is, that game. The problem is that you were drunk before you set off. Yeah. And I knew I I knew we were never getting that money back. There was no way, and you know I respect you as a poker player. Yeah. But that was not your game that you were going to win. No, and I didn't really go in thinking I would. The problem was it was very late. It was uh, too late. It was, it was one too... o'clock kickoff for an yeah. eight-player slow blind game. It was, yeah, and it was quite slow. Oh, with the battle the next day? Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, I sit down at this table, have a great time. Like the, They've got some really nice whiskey. That's just basically flowing free around the table, and it's and but the great thing is, that all of this is done IC, so they're literally all like talking like a mercenary company sitting at the gambling ta- gambling table, and the guy from High Guard is doing the whole thing where he basically tips out his purse, and it's just coin everywhere because he's like this extremely wealthy guy and he's able to just like oh here's your buy-in and i'm like fumbling around in my purse yeah, my two like, friends. trying to grab all the coins together everyone else is talking about buy you know rebuys and stuff you, no, i no, can't no. afford you the rebuy it was you got the prices wrong didn't you so you didn't even have beer money when you got there no i did have enough for that oh you did uh yeah but, the, the, I didn't but have you were enough strapped for... that was all you had i didn't have anything for a rebuy everybody else like they had money for rebuys and then you uh, end up like them offering you a rebuy and yeah oh that's how it begins oh. and they have to start giving up precious heirlooms and stuff like that no, no. so it basically um the game was long um and it it, it was that kind of game uh, and it basically got to the point where i was like if I'm going to carry on playing, I want to be playing with a big stack yeah. of chips. You got to wait for the right cards, and then you I got a reasonable games. hand. I didn't the, play it that the right well, cards, to be honest. The right hand. It, it's that part of poker where you really should have to be disciplined and not do what I did, but mm-hmm. I did it. Uh, it was a, a free player uh, flop. I had the second best hand, basically. Yeah. Uh, and it com- yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and it was it happens, and it was like. But I had a really good time, and honestly, they were fantastic about it all. I'm so jealous. It was such an experience. To I'm have. So I hope, I hope my little ventures into the political world will get me invited to some like yeah, exquisite. It, it was just high fun. roller shit. It was just a it's lot of fun. Affected you, yeah. It's affected you seeing the wealth in other people. You have <laughs> envy's green I have eyes right slightly, now. Slightly, I got slightly better tastes. Oh, I can't me. drink. I can't drink this piss. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was, it was really good. Where Actually, well, good later stuff? on we'll find out I can drink some really bad stuff. But yeah. that's, yeah. For, that's for that's for that's uh, for Saturday. So basically, after losing, uh, it, it, you know, I just basically had a couple of drinks there, gathered my stuff, headed back to the songs and story time circle. Mm-hmm. Spoke to, and, and at that point, it had all kind of broken up because this was like super late at this time. I think I might have gone back to Urizen very briefly. I think you love a bit of late night. You I did. Uh, I had a I had a couple of drinks. Uh, generally had a really good time, and then just headed back to camp and went to sleep, getting ready for the battle. Yeah. On yet again, I went to bed before you did. Yeah, you made a be- better effort on the next day. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. At this yeah, stage. but yeah. So you're getting ready for the battle on Saturday, where we f- well we'll get into it when we get there. But it was it, it, yeah, it was it was an awesome yeah. event. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it right. We'll cut your next time, and we'll talk about Saturday. Saturday. There it is, Minnie's home setting. The last one bed for many miles, and just in time. If we stood still for five minutes, this snow would bury us. I'm so hungry I could eat the horse. Not that I know how big horses were, obviously. 
I imagine they were huge. Good evening. Good evening, folks. Minnie not working this evening? Afraid not. She's been rushing around all day. She's upstairs in bed. Dead tired. She's left me in charge for the evening. Ah, okay. Well, we require beds for the night, but more importantly, right now we need beverages and nourishment. Certainly. Mugs and the keg are on the side. Please help yourselves and make yourselves comfortable. I'll send out three bowls of stew in just a minute. Wonderful. Uh, you wouldn't happen to be from Highgard, would you? Uh, yes I am. Highborn and proud of it. Interesting. Right, let's grab some seats. (laughs) 